Hi everybody, we are now having a workshop, <coughs> your application everywhere, just in a snap. You will learn in this workshop how to, how to snap applications or how to package applications as a snap so that you can distribute them by the snap store and that they work on all distributions on which you can install SnapD. So the original <coughs> of the workshop stems from a workshop of the Ubuntu Summit 2022, Snapping Like Healthworth, given by Heather, given by Heather Ellsworth and uh, Lucy Lavalin. And, uh, and in the time after that, I've I have given the workshop on several conferences, and today, but today we have <coughs> very different exercises due to the limited bandwidth of the internet here, but also with these exercises you will get the clues about how to package applications as a snap. Next. So, one thing is to ease your participation, your hands-on participation in the exercises. The first thing is you should download the, snap, uh, the, the slides. You should download the slides <coughs> from the timetable of this conference, from the entry <coughs> of this workshop in the, in the timetable. There's a little paper clip on this entry. And you should download the slides even if you have already done so because we have updated them because of the change of the exercises. So please download the slides, then, then you can easily copy and paste uh, command lines and click on links and so on. Next. Yes, yes. And one thing is, to, to make snaps, you need Snapcraft. And on Ubuntu, you, you can easily install Snapcraft with the command lines which are shown here. So if you download the, sna uh, the slides, you can simply copy and paste these command lines to install Snapcraft. And these command lines install also some other development tools, which we will also need for one of the examples. Uh, so, because we don't have that much of a capability via the network here, so we are keeping this virtual machine set up, but uh, we actually have this plan that we'll have a virtual machine completely set up and uh, it will have all the things necessary, but we are keeping this part. So, if you yes. want, you can Yes. It's, it's, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go closer to the. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So we are skipping this part, but if you want to give it a try after, uh, you can. So these are these are the ways you can set up the virtual virtual machine, and let's skip this. And now we have a little introduction into Snap. What the hell are snaps? If every one of you has, has attended my talk yesterday, probably all is familiar to you. But if one or another is not, did not attend the talk, I will tell in some sentences what snaps are next. Yes, yes, yes. So, <clears throat> no, let, let us skip that part. We will directly uh, advance to the exercises. We are actually in a time crunch. This uh, workshop was meant to be one hour thirty minutes, but now it's less than one hour. So we'll just uh, skip to the main part. So let's skip this. Let me go to the first example: the "Hello World" snap. Yes. Now we have a first example. We have a very small and simple GTK application which comes as an example with GTK, and we will just, just snap this application. Next. And, and what we will 
what we will do, we will have, we, you will see that we, we will, uh, we create a, a file, an instruction file or, or manifest. It is named snapquap.yaml and we, it will describe everything which is needed to build the snap all in one file. And the file especially will contain basic metadata like name, version, number, description. And it will take, uh, have information about the applications which can be started by the user and about and also the parts which have to be to be built the application itself libraries and so on to to make up the complete snap and the instructions to build every part and one I will we will also show how to include build dependencies and runtime dependencies we will use a plugin, the dump plugin, a very simple one. And we have a local source, which means we have the snapcraft.yaml and the source code in the same directory. And we will do show manual building and in, in the first, we, and in the end, we will build and test the little snap next. And next. Yes, and at first, I will show you what application we are using. You follow the link here by clicking in, in your copy of the slides, and you will find this. Uh, this you, you can clone, you, you can download this file. It is uh, hello world gtk.c and it will probably not be in the same directory when you just download it. And you can easily compile it with a, with a GCC, with a direct GCC call, and the needed library uh, information which has to be added is added by the embedded PP, PKG config commands. And when you have done so, you start Hello World GTK and see you get a little window which does hello world in it. And this is what we will snap. Next. <coughs> yes, it has switched. Somehow it gets slow. Perhaps you do, you pass on by the keyboard, not by the phone. Yes, yes. Now, to snap this program, we have the we have the source, and we know how to make the binary. So we cannot only do the, create the binary by hand as we did now. We can also, with this information, create a snapcraft.yaml which builds the binary and includes it in a snap. So at first, if you haven't done the first commands of the previous slide and start now with creating the snap. Please delete the binary which, which you have created because this binary is not working when it's in the snap. And so it does not, we should avoid that it accidentally is included in the snap. So, no, 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 big, big, big. So take your favorite editor, create a file named snapcraft.yaml and in this snapcraft.yaml, in the same directory as you have your, uh, your source code of hello world gtk, and this will contain, uh, this will contain these three sections. It will contain the metadata, the, the part about the startable application, and also the part about the parts we need to build. And next, now we have the metadata. The metadata is the name. We have always a name. Every snap must have a name. The name is something with only letters, numbers, and dashes, no spaces. And we have a version number. In our case, we directly cite the word version number and the metadata 
later on we will also learn that there are uh, ways of automation and then we have the summary it's a one-line description so for used for for lists of available snaps or so and we have the description which can be multiple line so that we have you have a longer description when you for example get a listing of one single snap that you see the longer description in it then we have the base distro which is core 24. the base distro is a collection of libraries of standard libraries which pra practically any program uses and core 24 means it's the base library is based on ubuntu 24.04 so these libraries are the versions of Ubuntu 24.04. And we have the confinement. Confinement strict means that all the security encapsulation uh, uh, facilities of SNAP are enforced in this SNAP. In confinement, we can also have development, which means that the restrictions are not enforced. In case it's uh, it's devil confined or and there is another confinement that is classic. Uh, in that case, like you installed Snapcraft right now, I believe. So Snapcraft is a classically confined snap, which is actually mounted at the user namespace, at the real user namespace, and you can invoke any binary, and there is not much of an app hour restrictions on it in case of a classic snap. And in case of a devil snap, where it, it is not allowed to be to be to have the snap in the stable or the candidate channel, and also in that case, it, the restriction that app armor restrictions will not uh, will not be shown. It will not be restricted, but it will be locked in the snappy debug and in the general context. Yes, one thing in, important: we told stable and candidate ch channel. We have a, the snap store. And we want to upload our snap into the snap store and this in the snap store you are uploading each your snap into so-called channels there's an edge channel for development snapshots there's a beta channel for uh, for packages which are shortly before release but still need changes there's a candidate channel when you have something which you want to release but you want to have it uh, tested before you actually release it in the stable channel, which is your official release. And you can, you can upload into candidate or stable only packages which have a strict confinement where the, the, where the, where the encapsulation of SNAP actually is, in, is applied. The encapsulation about which I have talked yesterday in my talk. And in case of classic, it will need to go through a manual review by the school team, and then you can upload it to any channel you want. And also, there are uh, some auxiliary metadata which are not mandatory, but it's good to have it like links, various links for bug filing, links for the website, links for contact, and all. So you can get all the list with that given link there. Yes, these links will appear in the snap store listing on the Snapcraft website, but also in the snap store listings on of GUI tools or command line tools, which you use on your machine to install snaps. So the second part of the snapcraft.yaml file is the part where you describe which applications the user can actually start when the snap is installed. And in our case, we, have, we want to include one startable application, which is named Hello World GTK. So therefore, we have a sub, subsection, Hello World GTK in our apps section. And, in, and first, we must tell which command is actually called inside the snap encapsulation and this command is source snap slash hello world gtk and this directory is relative to the root of you of, of the immutable snap image and this immutable snap image is mounted into slash snap slash hello world gtk the name of the snap 
slash current and on, under this you will then have slash source slash hello world gtk and then this, when this com and with this command you you would start exactly that open and uh, i would like to add here that uh, when you are building this map this file thus src slash hello world gtk will be under craft prime that is the place that is the folder where all the buildings all the parts are have staged all the libraries that, you, that will be in the final snap. That folder and this is respect related to that folder. Yes, and now you, the next thing is the plugs. These are interfaces. Our snap will connect to two interfaces. One interface is X11, the, the other is Wayland. With this, we are connecting to the host systems uh, graphical, graphical uh, uh, interface so that we can open a window and we plug both interfaces X11 and Wayland so that the snap can be installed on, on systems which use X11 but also on systems which use Wayland and is not restricted to only one, one, uh, one type of systems. Yes. 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 So, the parts. Now we have the parts, and in the parts, you see that we have to uh, that we describe how we will build our snap. In our case, we have the plugin dump, which needs. We simply put the files, our source files, the files in the directory where we have also the Snapcraft YAML. We put them simply into the Snap. And we, and our source is our current directory where our Snapcraft YAML is. So these files, we, we, these files and all subdirectories we put into the Snap. And then we do an override build, which means we run a small scriptlet during the build of the snap. And this, in our case, will just compile our uh, program. So set minus E U X is simply to so to get a more verbose logging of the execution of the script. Then we go into the directory where, where the source file is, and we compile the source file, we go back, and then we do craft CTL default. This means at that place in the scriptlet, we do everything which, the, which in the build step of the snap is done by default. And um, we need build dependencies. We need for building pkgconf and libgtk minus 4 dev. These are Debian packages of, of the same version as the base distro. So these are, in our case, Debian packages of 24.04, of Ubuntu 24.04. And stage package, these are went one time directories. We must include libgtk minus 4 minus 1 in our snap so that our hello world gtk works as it needs libgtk. And that is the part. So these are the instructions for building, building the snap. And uh, so I'd like to add here that uh, when we are running craft control default, it's basically doing is we have a plugin dump and it runs all the commands that is set by the plugin dump or whatever plugin we set while uh, setting up these parts. So moving on to the next slide. So now you want to build the snap. You have probably taken the snapcraft.yaml from the link which we have uh, uh, provided or from the or uh, copied and pasted it together in ed an editor and now you have to run the snapcraft command and the snapcraft command without special without sub command just builds the snap and we have we have options minus minus verbosity debug this means the highest verbosity, it really locks everything on the screen while building. 
end, we have minus minus debug. This means when the build fails, it does not leave the, 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 the container in which the build is done. You stay in a, sh in a shell inside the container, and so you can investigate what went wrong. And to get out of the container, you simply do exit to leave the shell, and then you get out of the container back to your port. And here you see some part of the, of the output, the beginning and the end. The actual output is much, much longer. Yes, and now you have a snap file, a dot .snap file. This is the virtual, this is the immutable file system image of the snap. And this one you install so that it runs as a snap by the snap install command. But as it's a local file and not a signed file which is in the snap store, you have to give the option minus minus dangerous to install it. And so you give, give this command line and your local file, which is your snap, will get installed. And after that, you are available to run, you are, you are able to run the snap, uh, the snap, to run the snap application. And to run it, you can either just enter hello world GTK because the application name and the snap name is the same or you can also say snap snap one hello world gtk this is important that you have the snap one hello world gtk in the case that if you had a program with the same name installed classically so that you will start the snap program and not the classic program yes and now you have the first snap and you see, you, you, you have, in the, in the snap build, you have compiled from source and, and, and included the result in a snap. And you have, and you have also included with the stage packages, the library, the GTK library. And if the GTK library has by itself other package dependencies, they get included too. So you have, in the Hello World GTK and all its dependencies in one package. And this is important for the sandbox packaging that all is included so that you can install it everywhere. You are not dependent on your host, on your host system. So we can go to the next example. And uh, this is where we try to snap a uh, real world snap, real world package that is TLDR Python client. It's basically uh, like a band page, but it's TLDR, yes. too long, don't worry. So let's go to the section. And uh, this, is actually, this is an actual CLI application. This uses Python. This project is based on Python, of course. And uh, uh, the build system that it uses is also, uh, also Python. And in this example, like as, as it's written, you will CLI for who does not know it means command line interface. So we don't open a window, it works completely in the command line, like yeah. LS or so. Yeah. We actually had said a uh, graphical user interface application, but due to time crunch and the internet problems, we just uh, shifted to a CLI. So in this app, we'll try to see how a snap can have internet connection while it's having running. So first of all, basically, uh, this is the repo you can see in the screen and those who have downloaded the slides can clone this repo. And this is the metadata section of the snap. This is the uh, same as he said already, as he said already, the name, the base, the version, the summary and description. And now we set the grade that is stable so that we can uh, push it to uh, stable and candidate channels. And then confinement. That is strict, of course. And now this is a new addition in the code 22 section that is platforms. We can use AMD64 to cross compile ARM64 or ARM HF uh, binaries and similar vice versa. So that is why we can have like AMD64 built on AMD64 and we can have 
multiple versions under it, like uh, built for AMD 64 ARM 64 ARM HF, but we are just going uh, straight forward and having all this uh, built separately. So uh, these are all the five uh, uh, architectures that are supported right now. And uh, then we come to the apps part. So because this is a Python app, so the Python app has the, has the main binary file, the executing executable is in the uh, in the relative path of bin slash tldr bin as in young bin <laughs> and uh, this environment this is a very important thing while using python packages because if you somehow mess up this you miss this the it will give you a very classic error module not found <laughs> so uh, we need to set the python path to the snaps relative path that is snap slash a lib it can differ it can vary from people to people but uh, well uh, this example will have it here so it's a lib and then python 3.2 uh, you can have it like uh, you can organize it to have it in the always of having in the python 3 folder and just skip this part and then inside package because the much modules will be in this particular folder and we are just appending the rest of the python path if it, anything is set so we're not actually going through all the details because we are running out of time. So we'll just go through fast. And now then we are explaining the plugs that is network and home because this uh, this app uh, will need access to will need or will uh, use the home uh, to have access to some files that might be used as uh, like offline caching and all. And obviously network because it fetches the database from their repository. Uh, directly, not using any local file when possible. Yes, one back point for this. I don't know. What, this application, TLDR, is an application which displays main pages, documentation, network interface, so that we can that we can access the network and by this the internet. And we can also have locally, say, uh, in, in the user's home directory, we can locally uh, store also main pages and also display these with the, with the utility. And therefore, we need to have access to the user's home directory. And for this, we plug the interface home. So going to the next slide, that is building this app from source. Uh, okay, so we actually missed one thing, that is the part section. So if anyone has uh, cloned the source, we actually missed the part section. This was done in a hurry and just uh, some time before the workshop started. So let's just give me, uh, let's just, let me just give you a small idea on how the part section will look like. So it's basically, uh, you will have a, a source code where you will, you will point to a Git repository and then you will uh, say the plugin as Python because this is a Python project and this is also using Python as their build system. So, uh, and uh, we can, of course, from that, uh, uh, from those uh, uh, plugins, we can pass uh, parameters, like we have given an example with Mason. Uh, uh, we have passed prefix as slash user and uh, build type as uh, release. So also all the supported uh, plugins, you uh, can see in the given link there. And uh, like, for example, a lot of popular plugins and as in, as in languages also like Rust, Go, and of course, Mason, Make, CMake, Autotools, the legendary Autotools, uh, all are supported, of course. Yes. So, for, so for most for most common build systems, you do not need to uh, to do all the com com commands manually. There is already a ready-made plugin which does the correct sequence, like configure, make, make, install, and you and you only only by the only by selecting this uh, the right plugin and you give for the plugin the parameters for example if the plugin is auto tools configure make make install then you get uh, then you supply configure parameters and these are the parameters for the command line of configure and here you have meson parameters when one selects meson for a gnome application for example then you give the meson parameters for the first meson call and so on 
Okay, so uh, because we have some more time, we will look into integrating FFmpeg into SNAPS. Like having FFmpeg building from source is a tough thing, I believe. Like it will take uh, around one or two hours to just build it. So let's see it in the next SNAP. That is YT DLP. So I know it's a very popular one and uh, not to be... Yes, I want to say also something. We are now telling you how to do the things with SNAP. Now I want to know, any one of you is actually trying it out? Yes. You are trying it out? It works for you? You have an Ubuntu system? You are, you are using that arch, right? So he's uh, successful in, uh, with it in art. Ah, you are successful with it in art. This is great to know that because in the Ubuntu twenty, in the Ubuntu Summit two thousand twenty two, we had uh, major difficulties with people with non Ubuntu distros. But now we have already found it out, and now it it, it seems also to to work on the other distros. So let's start with uh, snapping this. So as uh, as before, I have forgot to add the parts section, but it's uh, kind of similar. If we, those who have cloned the repo can uh, see it directly in the uh, in the manifest right there, and uh, we're just gonna go through the FFMP part and the metadata part. So it's basically that that uh, we will show how to integrate a content snap that is like a dependency, uh, as in not as in Debian dependency, but rather. You can think of something between uh, Debian and like some completely standalone app images. So we'll we'll see that in the next slide. So first of all, of course, uh, metadata, and this is the repository to clone from. This is actually my port because the ffmpeg one, ffmpeg integrated one, is still not in the uh, in the official uh, snap. That is official snap repository. That the MR is still in the queue. Uh, so these are the same as it is, like uh, as you saw before. The name, the description summary, the uh, and this one. This one is a bit particular. This is adopt info ytlp. So in this case, what we can do is we can set version, we can set grade directly by overriding the build, like using uh, using the craft control tool. If you we are we are above uh, static, so that we don't forget to update the version of Python, which update to each code. Like code twenty two has Python three dot one one, code twenty four has Python three dot one two. So this will help us as it is. Now the second thing. This is where we are integrating the ffmpeg snap. We are adding the ffmpeg snaps LD, LD paths, the library paths, into the LD library paths so that it can look into those libraries before looking into the snaps original library paths. So it's snap ffmpeg platform. I am coming to this ffmpeg platform part a bit later in the next slide. And then use a leaf and uh, the craft card arch triplet built for that is a uh, that's an inbuilt uh, inbuilt uh, 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 variable which is which gives the craft triplet i.e. x86 underscore 64 minus linux minus gnu okay let's not <laughs> <laughs> paths now this one is also interesting because as we are doing same with the LT library path we are doing the same for the path so that it can find the path if you play or if you play binaries which are in, in the FFMPEG platform. So this one is actually request a CA bundle so that uh, the YTDLP look, looks into the CA bundle that is uh, in the host directory, not that is not uh, shipped by request module, Python module. So this is not actually related too much, but uh, this is not actually important. It's just a fix for our previous solution. So let's go to the next slide. And this is this thing is the most important thing for integrating FFmpeg into your apps. So here, as you can, when we try using Gnome apps, we need to have Gnome Container Snap uh, as a plug. You can't see it because that is added later by the Gnome extension. But here, we need to manually have it because we don't have extension. And I think we not, we don't, not all of us need an extension for this. So this is, we are keeping the plug name same. Uh, as the default provider, it helps us a bit to understand and recognize which plug we are going to connect. So, FFmpeg 2404, that is uh, using the code 24 version, using uh, it keeps helps us keeping the API and API compatibility. 
Now, interface. This is the contain snaps interface. And then the target, which I was talking before, the FMMPEG platform, i.e., here the FMMPEG content provider will be mounted in this particular folder uh, under snap. Like first, it will be slap, uh, it will be the snap variable. I can be like slash snap slash uh, YTTLP slash current or any revision, and then the FMMPEG platform it will be mounted under that folder. So FMMPEG platform is our target, and the default provider that is. We can have multiple providers of FMMPEG. So let's say someone, the next day someone can come up with something uh, with a build of FMMPEG that is old, that only has the uh, GPL versions and doesn't have the LGPL versions as Google wants to try to create with state snaps and all. So I actually took inspiration from you, Google. <laughs> so uh, one can perhaps come up with a FMMPEG that is, uh, that is very much optimized for the NVIDIA libraries and all. So there can be multiple providers, but we are setting a default provider so that a user uh, doesn't get to see that, oh, I can't find a FMPEG. Why did he have me complaining? Okay, so uh, that's it basically. We, we got our snap into FMPEG and I guess we do have some time. So let's uh, come to actual part of uh, the, uh, the workshop where we will try to create a GUI application with Gnome Text Editor. Yes. One one thing also for the for the content provider snaps, you know that each snap has an immutable file system image. So when we install our snap our, uh, YTDLP, the at first the YTDLP uh, uh, immutable file system image is mounted, and into this immutable file system image of YPDLP at the given target, the immutable file system image of the FFmpeg minus 2404 uh, package is mounted so that in our sandbox of the YTDLP snap, there we have also the FFmpeg libraries and command line tools. So we are now going to start uh, uh, snapping the GNOME text editor as an actual GNOME app with a graphical user interface. So let's look into it. So now we take a GNOME application, a simple GNOME application, the GNOME text editor, which in every distro you have it already, but it's simple and nice as an exercise, as an example. For this workshop, it is, it is really a GNOME application, not only a GTK application, so it uses all the resources of, of the GNOME desktop. And one, one thing is we add to the app's entry, the entry extensions colon list with only GNOME, and this entry pulls in the GNOME extension, and it, an extension is you can you can imagine it a bunch of extra lines for the snapcraft.yaml. So with the extension, we we pull these extra lines into our snapcraft.yaml. It will not be applied to the file which you have on disk, but to the temporary file which uh, snapcraft will pass to actually build the snap. And uh, I would like to add here that. If you want to see what is actually added in we're using that extension, like what is Gnome extensions is actually adding, you can simply run from your project folder snap that expand minus extensions. This will give you all the snippets that are manually added and the complete snap cap mani uh, manifest that snap cap will actually see while building the snap. Yes, and the purpose of the ex Gnome extension is the following. At first, it adds all the resources from GNOME, GTK, and, and, the desk, and, and, and the desktop in general. It adds the inter it adds the plugs to the interfaces X11, Wayland, Desktop, G settings, and others. You know already from the first example, X11, Wayland, so that we can open a window. G settings so that we can access the settings of GNOME, 
desktop for general desktop uh, uh, resources, and we connect to the GNOME con content provider Snaps. So we include the GNOME content provider Snap with the help of the extension, so that we have access to all the GNOME libraries and fonts and icons and so on. And and this yes yes the Snapcraft extension you can we as I said is is an add-on uh, to ex extra lines for Snapcraft.yaml so it's a little bit like a header file an include file for uh, in a C program and uh, with the advent of Core twenty four as we all know that the new GPU stack has come up with the uh, uh, with the Mesa twenty four zero four Snap. That is also added uh, additionally from this extension, uh, from this GNOME extension within your Snap manifest. So, and you need also to add an entry for, to your apps for the desktop file. As for each application which you want to run in a desktop, there's a, 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 a dot desktop file which describes how to start the application and how to display the application in the launcher. So the icon, the dis uh, a one line description and, and translations for the one line description. And we, and we also, our application also has to provide a, a slot for the debug session bus so that the G GTK application registration works. And we use lay. We, we can with the layout. We can uh, move parts of the installed file virtu virtually around so that they get found. Next. And uh, just I want to add a bit here. With layout, it's basically App Armor mounting it uh, as like taking the the folder to a different folder that we want to have. For example, let's say we want to have slash user mounted under slash snap slash user. So we can do that baking thing with this layout. Next. So now we have here the metadata. We have, as usual, the name, the base distro rate, confinement. One important thing in the YAML file, the, of the order in, of the items in each subsection does not matter. So we can have the metadata at the beginning but, or at the end of, snap, of snapcraft.yaml or, or we can have the core inside or we can have inside the metadata the core the core distro mentioned it right in the beginning or, or more down. This does not matter. And we also see here uh, we we have yes we have Many things static here, version, description, summary. Then we have here the slot for the for the GTK application registration. And we have a layout. No, this is not complete. It's, it's got cut a bit, that uh, that picking thing I was talking about. So it's a layout, it's basically pointing the slash user slash share share slash uh, you know text editor folder under slash uh, snap variable like ie slash snap slash uh, you know, text data slash current slash user slash share slash you know, text data. You can uh, bind it, you can bind mount it, you can like you can symlink that folder, you can choose any of them. But uh, we are reco we recommend using symlink because when possible, because it's the uh, best to have because this thing actually affects the snaps runtime and like startup uh, time of the snap. So, symlink is the thing we should try. And one thing. We actually have a hack to not use this. I'll talk about it in the parts section. So now we have the apps section. As I mentioned, extensions GNOME. And we can even take more extensions. For example, so you see that GNOME is not written just there. It is in a list with only one item here. And this list can have more items. So if you have a GNOME application and it needs also another extension, you can add it to the list. And then you, you need naturally a command to start the executable. You need a desktop file. 
to represent the executable in the launcher, you need an you, we set some environment variables which are needed for our for our uh, appli uh, for our application. So GTK use portal is actually added by the extension now. We actually don't need it anymore. This it was built for some older versions where it was not added. And GTK debug portals is for a bug where the snap wasn't able to use uh, user portals uh, while using GTK uh, GTK file chooser, and it's also now been fixed. And uh, actually, that fear was created by me. <laughs> uh, so now we come to the plug section. Yes, the plug se session section is very simple. It's the extension, it adds, or the GNOME extension, adds already the plugs which are, are needed for desktop, opening window, GNOME, and so on. And so we only need to add the plugs which are specific to our program. We take home and removable remove media. With this we can, with the GNOME text editor, load, file, load and save files in the home directory and load and save files on any removable media, like on a USB stick, so that we can use the editor as we, we are used to use it. And then we have the mount, observe, and the cups. Cups is there that we can print out of the editor. The editor has a print function. When you press Control P, the print dialog opens, and you can print you are edited file on paper, and, and the therefore it actually made every printer work. The speaker actually made every printer work. And then, and then your your file is is passed on into my responsibility into the cut snap and gets printed. Uh, regarding the mount of the plug, it's actually uh, you know guys actually try to know how much this we have left, and that's why it's needed to observe. But it's just there to reduce the logging. So next slide. So, and the, now there are several methods how we can include. Yes, yes, yes. Now one thing is there are several methods how you can uh, how you can if you snap a pro, uh, an application how you can get the application into the snap. One thing which we have tweeted already, we have compiled from source in the other in, in, in the other examples, but one can also do other things. For example, you can take the a binary Debian package, you can take the dev file and download it from Launchpad, but you do not install it. You simply download the dev file. And then you can include that you can open and un uncompress the dev file, but not actually install it in, with the lines in parts. So for the GNOME text editor part, you use the plugin done, but at the so as the source, you need you 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 take the dev file, which you have in your local directory. And as a source type, you take dev. And this, this means the dev file gets uncompressed, only uncompressed. The maintainer scripts do not get executed. And this uncompressed dev file is dumped into the snap. Yes. And with this, you have uh, you have in you have the the executable of the of the GNOME text editor. You naturally must add the dependencies, for example, by using the GNOME extension, and also take care of other dependencies which are individual to GNOME text editor. Then you would need to also to need to add appropriate stage packages. And another way. For a quick and dirty snapping of an application, for example, if you quickly need a snap just for development and debugging, you can simply mention the application which you want to snap in the stage packages. You take the part as here, you need the plug in nil. Nil means we do nothing. 
We do nothing. We only want to, we only do when we have an overwhelming pull or overwhelming bill, then we do something. But if we don't have it, we do nothing and only do and only install the stage packages. And we have as a stage packages here the GNOME text editor. This means this year just installs the stage, uh, the, just installs the GNOME text editor the Debian package of the GNOME text editor, but it installs all its dependencies, which means when we are when we are using the GNOME extension, we have a lot of duplicates of libraries in our snap. So this would mean we need an, a, a big manual cleanup. So it's really very quick and dirty. It's not suitable for putting into the snap store. It's really only for quick development and debugging tasks. This is basically like wrapping snap into <laughs> that you dip into snap. So now next slide and you see what you have to do when you are an app developer and want to make a snap for the snap store or when you are a snap crafter and want to uh, install and make a snap of someone else's upstream project. What you need, what you do is inside the snap build, you build from source, like also in classic packages, when RPMs or Debian packages are built, they are, they are usually also always built from source. What we can do with, with all free software projects, the two previous methods can also be used to snap proprietary software, you, but you, you, you need permission to put that in, into the snap store. But in for free software, it is always recommended for an official snap in the snap store always to compile from source, as you can most flexibly react to any unforeseen things, to any, uh, any things which you have to adapt, because the original application is not necessarily designed for being snapped. So, you will not you will not include any binary packages of your application will you will only load the source code during the build and and, uh, and build it so here uh, we have added our old automation system we have explained before like uh, the Ubuntu desktop teams automation system, but that is where also our organization Snap Crafters had came up and we have created a new automation system that uses GitHub to completely build and uh, maintain, update and push uh, all the packages to their respective channels and uh, yes. the channels. Yes, one thing important also when you build from source and when you, this most free software is hosted on a, on a Git repository and when you build from source and do not load the release tables for that but instead you uh, load from the Git repository using, this, uh, using the releases tag then you with this when you do the snapcraft.yaml this way you can easily add <coughs> Uh, update automation. Uh, so uh, you, you, you do a GitHub action on your on on your snap on, on your you, when you have your when you naturally have to run your to host your snapping your snapcraft.yaml. You have to host on GitHub, and then you can apply a GitHub action a GitHub workflow to it, which every twenty four hours checks the tags from which you download the the source the source code for each part and checks these tags and and checks whether the, these are the newest releases and if not it updates the tags and rebuilds the snap so that so that it's taken care that your snap is always up to date completely automatically this is also an advantage when you Build your snap from source. In our CY though, we can have it uh, auto. We can have this automation for any any kind of source, like for tar packages, for dip dip packages, for even uh, like uh, any kind of source you can think of. Like it's just basically we use a custom update script. So 
we don't need to have it only Git repository and neither we need to clone that Git repository uh, and then we need to check for new tags. Uh, and this is the build system part we actually talked in the initial slide, so we are just keeping this part. And now we can also we we can also uh, aut automate that uh, the insertion of a lot of meta metadata items like description uh, description and version number and so on by as as I earlier mentioned using adopt info in the metadata. Yeah, adopt info GNOME text editor is the main part, is the GNOME text editor part. And inside the part, we can, for example, say parse info and give an, X, an app stream XML file. Or we can uh, or we can set variables with craft CTL set version equals to something. For example, if, if we Put a scriptlet in uh, override uh, pull or override build with which we determine the version number from the source code. And this way we can fill metadata in an automated way and assure that the metadata is always correct and not that when we uh, update either by hand or automated the, the source code of, of a path of the main part, then the metadata gets out of date. And we also need to provide the icons uh, of, the, of the application, so that the application appears with its icon in the, in the uh, launcher. We actually don't need to cache the icons anymore because this is done by uh, Hooks, which, is, uh, which is done while the snap is installed, a configure hook is created and there is an icon cache created after the snap is already installed and within your local uh, local system. So we don't need to find it, uh, find and override build the index name files anymore. Yeah. Next slide. So now we build this build the snap the same way as we are used to. And now, before we start it, we must assure that we do not have the classically installed GNOME text editor running. As if we have the classically installed GNOME text editor running, the second instance of the GNOME text editor, the, the, the snapped GNOME text editor which we start, does not actually start. It sees the first instance, the running uh, classic GNOME text editor, and so it passes on its command line parameters, the file which we want to open, to the first instance and exits. And so our file is opened in the classically installed GNOME text editor. So we have to check and to close, kill the, the, the classic one, and then we start the snapped GNOME text editor, and then we are sure that we are running the snapped one. And with the ps command, we can also see that the snap, then the snapped executable is actually running. And uh, here is one thing that Anathu will not at all like. We can just skip this part and delete the Debian <laughs> it's Debian version of GNOME you know, text editor, and then simply run the snap uh, version of GNOME you know, text editor. Yes. yes, where we must be careful. Where we must be careful. It is often not that easy as the comma as uh, the the, the meta package Ubuntu desktop probably depends on the GNOME text editor because this is needed that initially the, the, the Ubuntu distro gets completely installed. So basically, these are the libraries. For example, when you, we are running GNOME text editor, we'll of course need a lot of libraries. And Snapcraft uses LD when when we are building the snap. Where it shows up at the end of the build when the build process is done. It goes to LD through all the binaries that are in the draft prime folder, and then 
it shows us warning that this will this uh, library is missing this library is unnecessary unused yeah the unused part is not always there it's often like it thinks that it's unused but it is and but the thing is if it shows that lib editor config is missing then it definitely should be added and that's what we are doing here we are adding the stage packages Yes, this is a library which GNOME Text Editor uses, but it's an individual dependency. Only GNOME Text Editor uses it, but generally GNOME applications do not use it, so it is not part of the GNOME uh, Content Provider Snap. So that was it, and uh, we don't want to continue to this example because like, we have this up to here. And let's have some questions. Are there any questions? Yeah, I believe Rudra has one. So let's spit it out. <laughs> so I remember um, having a snap a couple of years ago, and back then I remember when I was I just ate the snap on the snap on the snap on the snap on the snap. I remember seeing an object connected to the snap. So we were talking. Uh, I would like to like uh, like I would not able to satisfy what you want to listen, but that's the truth. It's still GitHub only. There is still I believe it's three years old issue from uh, snapcraft.io repo under canonical. And it still asks to add uh, GitLab and other instances there. So yeah, so it's still the same thing. We can't. By the way, one thing we can surely do is we can have our Snapcrafter CI, which we can implement in GitHub, and it actually uses remote build, Snapcraft remote build, to build the Snap in Launchpad, and then the Snap we have it in the in the GitHub runner, and we push it to any channel we want using Snapcraft. And well, you should you should have uh, come to you should have come to our booth to know about it. Yes. Are there any further questions? Any anyone? Uh, Archdai, do you have any question? 